Welcome back to ESL1 Hamburg 2018. The grand final will continue very shortly. We're looking forward to our third draft. 1-1 one, one right now, if you're just joining us, between Vici and Team Secret. Now, before we head to that draft, time to check in with Sir Action Slacks. He's usually wandering around the building aimlessly, trying to find unwitting culprits for interviews. And apparently, right now, he's doing exactly that in the Snipes Player Lounge. That's right, Red Eye. We're right up here in the Snipes Lounge, looking around up here. We've got candy bars, we got Bitburger, but more important, we got unsuspecting interview subjects, my friend. We got teams up here, Evos is watching, some other guys, some players, managers. Let's go see if we can find somebody. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, miss. What are you reading there? What is this? Um, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> are you enjoying the games? I, I love it. I honestly just... <laughs> it's okay. Who do you hope wins uh, today? Secret. Team I secret. would love Secret to win. Uh, yeah, uh, impressive so far, right? Yeah. It was really intense games. I was so hyped about everything. It was amazing. I love this. I love this experience. I love this game. I love this arena. I love ESL. I love <laughs> Dota. I swear I love Dota. That was much more excited than I thought. Thank you so much. Pretty good for texting her friends and having me sneak up on her. Hey, how you doing, sir? How's the experience so far for you? It's very amazing, yeah, I love it. All right, who are you hoping takes us away, buddy? Uh, I just hope the best wins. What kind of answer is that? This is Dota, come on, brother. Hope the best wins, pick one. Then I go for Vici Gaming. Ah, there it is. All right, very good, very, oh my goodness gracious, come on. Oh, come on. This is Dota 2, we love everybody over here. Can I give it up for some Team Secret? Can I hear it out there for me? Team Secret, any fans? Yeah? All right, now come on. Be on your best behavior. Give me some VG Gaming, let me hear it. Come on, there it is. I told you, Dota community, best community, but we're having a lot of fun up here in the Snipes Lounge. Everybody's very electric, and Red Eye, we can't wait for those games coming up, buddy. Yep, much like ourselves back down here on the panel. We're looking forward to game number three. If you're just joining us, everything's tied up. It's probably the perfect time, actually. If you missed the first game, you missed nothing. Kind of. I You've missed two fantastic games. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. You've missed two great games, but luckily you're still with us for game number three. Gents, as we look forward to this draft, what are we expecting? More of the same? Uh, I guess more of the same bands, I feel like. I don't think the yeah. first phase bands changed too much based on what's been going on. I still want to be targeting. Oh, I guess already Ooh. the axe is gone, though. And that, that kind of brings into question maybe the necrophobes. You said it before, Kyle, how important it was to yep. Mag and Axe, those are the two offlaners Yang plays that can really influence the map. And I mean, he got the MVP last game. I think Fade should have deserved it, but Yang did hit a lot, a lot of calls. He was responsible yeah, for pretty much all the kills, and that's like maybe a crux of the VG draft, right? Where if you remove this from him, who's actually going to be able to, to start these fights? Because they really don't like active support heroes. You did see the DY line had a great game, but still, like that. It's a lot easier to say that when you win all three lanes. Yeah, when your axe absolutely free farms as well and has one of the earlier blink timings I think we've seen yeah. at the tournament. Okay, check. Banned out this time by Vici. Mm -hmm. Gonna respect the puppy. Do they? Hmm. Because Necrophos is now going to be left through two probably unless Secret takes that out. Uh, yeah, they I think the out. Bane was Second the other one. Game, right? Bane and Silencer would be the other two, right? That yeah. they've been banning out instead. So. I think the Necro is a better ban. I think that really think limits, so like you mentioned, I think that limits Yang a lot. It puts him onto one of those. I, yeah, I'd rather play against Magnus personally just because I feel like it needs a certain pairing to make it work very yeah. well. Like, we saw what, like the Mag DK, that, that wasn't exactly the best thing. You kind of need that TB. And also, what secret, they like to pick Venom. If you pick Magnus, they're going to pick Venom Answer, and you're not going to have a. Okay, so that's the other one that was banned last time with the Bane. It was Bane Secret, uh, Bane Silencer, and Necro last time. I don't think you fear Bane if you're Secret. Uh, the way they play, I, I think that Hero just gets run over. I believe they're fearing it just because of the lane dominance it can show, and yeah. that last game was a good example. I think they're setting up so they can even take the Necrophos, because if Vici first picks it, now they can okay. answer what with like Phoenix Tiny if they want to do something like that, yeah. or an even better setup to just shut this hero down. Brewmaster, too, looks very tempting still. So I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. I think you could Bane Brew, perhaps. Yeah, Bane Spinner. Uh, Popular one. It's been banned out in the last two games by Secret.
but Bane is yeah. a, a ranged support. That's true. How can that be a secret <laughs> hero? The thing is, you, you're at the stage, you know, it's game three. We have a reset. BO3 for the final. It's different now because the prep is somewhat out the window. You still got to keep in mind what you might need to fear from the, your opponent, right. but it's now like the in the inner inter series meta, whatever yep. you want to call it. And it's not about which heroes are the best, but you know what what is this team beating you with? And I think Secret targeting the Axe ban is, is telling of that. Vici second banning Morphling because Secret doesn't first ban the Wisp. They're kind of setting up for the IO Gyro if it's left available to them. Like these little things. Two great drafters trying to outthink one another. Phoenix Brew. Brew. Okay. Just mm. great overall throughout the net, throughout yep. the game versus that Necro. Same as game two. And the instant weaver response for that Phoenix. Same and it's game also two. and it's also very strong versus the Brewmaster too. We've seen time and yep. time again the bugs are very obnoxious. I'm surprised they didn't go Weaver on Secret, especially when they take out the axe. Because yep. I feel like this is like Vici loves this hero. And I thought that again that that was like the reason they could win that last game. That and is it, very true. How many other core heroes, or rather, how many other heroes does Vici have with that core support flexibility that can be played uh, yeah, like that true. Weaver was, right? We don't really get to see the support Weaver too much, but they did have, like, yeah. the best possible three lanes, so he had a lot of freedom to be a runner yeah. between them. That's the one thing they did have to set up for, and they could, they could actually do that again here. In, yeah, it's so rare with the TV Drow, especially. Yeah. Immediate TV ban. There's a hero we haven't seen in the series yet, either. Drought. Yeah, we have us. Oh, drought. Yeah. Drought. Yeah. Yeah. The TV. No, the TV. Like, <laughs> no, no. We never see TV. Wait, yeah, that here. So is that hero good? good? No, I don't know. I've seen it before. Especially not this final. I think I'm going to have dreams about Invoker Terribly later tonight. I think it's been, what, like eight times so far yeah. in the tournament stage? Yep. Reflect back. Keep Ref on coming. Reflection nightmares as well, right? Yeah. PL illusions and reflections. My reflection usually gives me nightmares, to be honest. So. <laughs> Stop talking about using game reflections. <laughs> TC are taking a long time on this follow-up ban, but yeah. they're they're also in the position like when you're uh, second pick. I think that this is the most critical part of the draft because you're going to ban into a ban immediate pick. Right. And this is where this is the part you have to abuse to get ahead in the draft. Yeah, exactly. That's why it, it's so much better on the other side in yeah. some ways. I have to tell you, the guy with the wait. sign there, by the way, uh, it didn't just get it wrong the wrong side. It was upside down as well. <laughs> it's failed in all sorts of ways. That I don't. Come on, Paul. Let it go. <laughs> he got away with it. I, I don't think he did. So hyper carries are. Well, the ones that we're used to seeing are out of the blue right now. Also, both I mean, PL is pretty good against Phoenix and Brewmaster. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it goes both ways on that matchup. Mm -hmm. Definitely the Phoenix. Hopefully, I can go back and give that guy another chance. I'd hate that to be an age the appearance yeah, on, on TV. Reincarnation with the sign. Yeah. So, uh, Vici want to set up for some type of Luna here with that Monkey King band? I mean, they played the Luna into it yeah, last so time. Yeah, the Luna is something they've really favored coming into this event, and they've played it a few times since they've been here, but... You're not a big believer, Kyle. Not, no, not a huge one, no. no. Uh, the way Vici plays it, though, it really fits their style, because it allows them to get ahead, stay ahead. Just paparazzi when he's on heroes like Luna. Just You can always trust him to carry a game. I just fear... <laughs> He did have some pretty incredible games there with that Hurricane Pike. Like, yeah. Man, he was showing some very high skill Luna play. Uh, if you're wondering what those uh, cheers are for, they, uh, the, the Mercedes Bulls are out again. Hashtag rise on. Thanks. <laughs> Come on, Paul, do your job. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey King. They're taking a lot of time with their band, but because it is that like, band to pick, so yeah. trying to think probably what carry they want to set up yeah. with here. Yeah, Shaker is still in the pool, but I, even though Yapsor does play a fantastic Shaker, I really didn't like it for Secret in that last game. I actually like Nyx a lot here, to be honest. It's amazing versus both Weaver and Necropos. It's not the most common hero. Yeah. But the DY hero. <laughs> but it works so well, because like, you're going to Shikuchi through a creep wave, even if you're a support some of the times. You can always get the Carapace into stun. It works well to protect the egg as well, because you have multiple different stuns. Great versus Necro. It's just a hero we don't see too often, so it's a little bit outside the box. And it doesn't really help your, it can't really help your lanes that much. Van Centaur. Eh, some new. Do they go back off immediately? For a secret, you think? They're going back to their Ogre strat. Ogre. And that's usually in indicative, indicative that the Brewmaster's gonna be a core, right? Yeah. Poppy's the Ogre player. Could be, could I guess it could be a core Ogre. 
Could be a core brew, core phoenix. Could be core. Yeah, I guess they still can have a lot of versatility between it. That's true. There's the bane. Okay. So we can actually go toe to toe. I mean, it is nice to have some single target control, a little bit of burst to go it, with the it, scythe. It's a really nice bane game as well already. Like all of Secret's heroes are excellent sleep or ult targets. Like you never want to be isolated by a sleep as a brew or a phoenix because these heroes just get hundred to zero. That's how they go down. And bane allows easy setup. SAP's digging the uh, the tinker, tinker brewlings. Maybe a little too early for now, yeah. but certainly something to keep in mind. Yeah, save that for the last pick. Yeah. It's it's getting there though. Ooh. That. Okay. What does that say about our versatility? Uh, just... I could be a bit concerned that the storm is gonna get the same situation that happened last time where they don't have a proper lane for him. And like last game they had to throw the invoker safely because that was their best option. I could see Vici just putting this Necrophos mid versus the Storm Spirit, and I saw what Ori did in yeah. the group stages yeah. versus that hero, and he just right. dismantled. So we had some discussions about that, basically, with the change with the static uh, remnant having less damage. You can now heal the creep wave, and it's very difficult to actually win that lane. Yeah. Storm. And Necro is just a, he's just this lane king. So why why are we seeing Storm here, and why aren't they waiting for the mid last? Like that shows to me they have a ton of faith in Nisha. Not just that, but Storm, well. That's actually a good point to bring up because they gave Nisha pretty much the keys to the car in that last game. They yeah. All, they were all in on Nisha to like take that game, but Storm is more versatile as a mid pick because you could theoretically put it in the side lane and it's already good in this game because you want to have a reach advantage against a Weaver and a Bane and a Necro, etc. And at a certain point, this is a great Storm game, but... so. It, if we're thinking niche, though, what do you guys think his best heroes have been? It's been the Morphling, the Terra Blade, the PL. Yeah. They're all gone. Yeah. All gone. And the nice. Weaver, even. You look at the last game, I again point to that Weaver as the reason that uh, you're losing uh, as Secret. And now that you have a Storm, you don't have that concern. They want to just ensure that they can always have that jump because Vici loves to play this super stable, disciplined game, <laughs> not allow them to, to puncture their five. They're loving you right now. Listen to them cheering for you, huh? That's the first. Yeah. <laughs> it's difficult. So they've only played, uh, they've only played one Storm Spirit yeah. game at this uh, tournament so far. There's the Luna we predicted pretty much uh, like 20 minutes ago for Peachy. Yeah, uh, as soon as I saw the monkey, <laughs> as soon as I saw the monkey <laughs> banner. And they also just, yeah, they love yeah. playing with that hero. Yeah, uh, the Storm Spirit is actually only the second game that Secret have played this tournament. Last time they played it was against Alliance, uh, which they won. They paired it with that, uh, in, in that particular one, with the Tiny. What do you guys think? The Enigma, so. What about uh, a potential 10th oh. pick Arc Warden? It's possible. Yeah. But right now, 10th uh, pick <laughs> it's, it's Odie Pixel. Um, Odie Pixel <laughs> badly throwing <laughs> balls. He's trying. He's working yeah. real. He's I mean, building up I mean, straight up. I mean, he's trying to kick balls. Oh my god, he actually, he's actually got one. Owen! Owen! You're a disgrace. You're supposed to be an English person would be able to kick balls. You're a disgrace, I mean. <laughs> I think Secret will 10th pick Spectre. Uh, yeah, Spectre the draft. That could definitely be an option. And, oh, I mean, we said last game was Shades of OG. Yeah. This would truly be yeah. going all out. Hmm. <laughs> Owen can't handle the pressure. <laughs> The equivalent of scoring two penalties. I like how there's this one guy who just keeps throwing it out of the upper stand, so Owen has to do it again. <laughs> oh, pressure's on. I'm losing track. Dude, production's on it. I'm impressed. So they wonder why we haven't won the World Cup for 50 years. <laughs> Beach is taking time with their last man. They're distracted. It's understandable. I mean, One more ban then. Two more picks. I like the Arc Warden ban. I feel like he just breaks it. It's a Luna, it's a ranged core. If they don't, they could stop the possibility. No, do secret pick it still. I mean, it depends on what this is for Vici, but. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. My goodness. Can we. Are we Avoid here? ban into a Luna pick. So, Lena Luna, which so, they have done before. So that is going to be Yang on the next as we kind of this is our best Spectre game I've seen. Oh, that's true. In this oh, what a great can, call that is. He can get pressured, but he has the Ogre, right? So that's what allows him to actually do yeah. and be able to lane there. 
It's just, you think about what beats the Vici. Like, they, again, don't have this natural frontliner other than the Necro. If you have a reach advantage and you can get on top of the squishies, you're going to win the fight. It can't uh, be Greedy, Broodmother though. could be incredibly powerful. Oh, oh what a great, great, great call, Trent. Great call, Trent. It is the Arc Warden to finish off the draft for Team Secret. Uh, all in on the Lunar Lena for Vici. Still looks a bit greedy for me from Secret. Does it? Too greedy? Like Storm and Arc Warden, these, these heroes take time. They, they, they finally pushed the greed limit for you. This is finally. They right, finally like, hit it. I mean, the last time too, but they had so much overwhelming team fight. They do again. It's crazy out there. It's absolutely crazy. Kyle, who's had the better draft? I'm going to give it to Secret. <laughs> but Owen gets points for style. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> for style. Yeah, uh, I think it's time we moved on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the game number three, so let's head over to our commentary team who are commentating on the Dota. I mean, I think I'd rather commentate on this wild game of giant ball crowd volleyball. Is that is that the sport we're playing here? Yeah, Puppy the crowd is getting into it, and I love it. Yeah, Puppy must be so confused. Like, man, they were so happy about <laughs> that storm pick. Like, <laughs> Everybody's like building up the excitement for the picks. Oh, it's an arc war. No, it's like, no, honestly, this is ridiculous. It's uh, we have like the hypest series that I've casted in some time, and like the crowd gets wildest for that ball. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a super fun series so far. Vici Gaming versus Secret. Game one, very, very tight. Ends up going the way of Secret despite Vici's big comeback that they had. Game two. Much more dominant for Vici Gaming. Pretty much controlled it all the way through. And while there were some small bumps in the road, they still managed to close out the game, I would say. Yeah. Better than Secret did in game one. Yeah, this has been such a back and forth series. I've seen in yeah. both games anyways, a way for both teams to win and both teams to lose. And they are so evenly matched. I mean, this is as 50-50 as it gets. Game number one, Vici almost had it. Game number two, Secret, despite being down 31,000 gold, almost brought it back. What more can you ask for? Looks like we do have a slight pause right now. Hopefully get this very exciting game three underway. What do you think about the draft? That last pick, Arc Warden, I mean, when Fogged is finally saying, ooh, maybe this is a bit too greedy for Secret, that says a lot about their draft. It, de it depends on how the lanes go and how aggressive uh, Beachy can get. I think the way to beat Team Secret is to try to punish that and push the pace. Yeah. And that's what they were able to do with that axe. And here we go. No volleyball this time. Now they're just excited about the Dota. Our lanes, always important. Uh, Puppy is going to be paired up with the Arc Warden for Secret. They're going to go in aggro lane. Once again, we're going to see that uh, support Weaver this time paired with a Necrophos for Yang. And don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, slight blackout, but we'll be back. The rest of our lanes, what do we got? Uh, what do you think about that last pick, Lina, for VG Gaming? This is a very fast lineup for them, between like the Lina and the Luna. I think the thing about Lina that's really good is that you, put in, you punish whenever people make rotations. Like, anytime you leave your lane, Lina just shoves in the lane. Uh, she has kill potential on any support that you'll send, try to send over to stabilize the lane, and more importantly, whenever mid one does leave the lane, if nobody replaces him, you'll take that tower real fast. Yeah. It's gonna be classic. Arc Warren setting up the spark raid traps on the bounty runes. Vici Gaming are gonna try and take it anyway. Hoping to be able to grab this. Fate has already taken so much damage. Gets fire blasted. Puppy does manage to pick up the bounty rune. Fate gets away with Sliver of Health, but Puppy may not be so lucky. DY as well as Yang. Yang's actually gonna run back to lane, leaving it for DY to take. And Fade, he's gonna try and hunt him down. Now that he's full health, oh, Shikuchi's on through. One hit, that'll be Fade. Picking up the first blood, revenge for a stolen bounty room. They do manage to get a pretty value sentry though. They originally placed it just to deal with the Weaver, uh, but instead it also manages to find the ward. How do you feel about this lane? The, uh, the Necrophos matched up against the Arc Warden? Because I feel like whenever I see these Arc Wardens, you gotta pressure his laning phase as best as possible. You can't just allow him to get free farm. This hero comes online way too quickly when he gets a free lane. Yeah. Then the Lina in our mid lane against the Storm Spirits. This is a real one-sided matchup for uh, Lina. The Storm can't really trade hits. You always get 
some form of harass whenever you try to move up for CS. Because if you think about it, Storm is more or less a melee hero. That you have to drop, you have to come into the lane, you drop a remnant. If you do that, uh, sometimes, like for example, you'll see three creeps ready to die. DUI so close again to a kill. Just trying to stop this pull from happening. And to be honest, it's two melee creeps. I feel like he punished Secret pretty well for that. Yep. I do like Storm in the pace of this game, though. I think it's a good hero against, Le uh, against Luna. I think it's a good hero overall in the game against Lina. It's just annoying to play the lane against. Yeah. Why, why is it that Vichy Gaming, uh, we've seen this duo so many times in this tournament, the Lina Lu Luna? Uh, I think for the Luna, it was just a good game. It's a good hero because it stabilizes your laning phase. It makes your whatever hero that you have to just trade hits with a lot more effective. Plus, they pick... I think this is the second time I've seen them pick... Somebody pick it against the Brewmaster, thinking that it's some sort of counter as... Zai, Zai. trying to seek his way around the trees. They do finally find him now. Cause Paparazzi a lot of health in the meantime, but they're both going to turn on the Absor, who with no armor can't really fight into that whatsoever. Back over to that top lane. And that top lane, things might be... Phoenix is going to be able to get away, hiding away in the trees, DY and Paparazzi give up on that chase, because after all, got to focus on those lane creeps. Don't let that farm get away. Yeah, it's not really worth it for you to skip an entire wave just to get a kill onto a, a support hero. Yeah. Still 2-0 to zero so far for Vici. Especially Put a lot into this laning phase. They did beat the Brewmaster last game. That should give them some confidence. Yeah. Just don't lose your courier like four times again. <laughs> Do you feel like the Brewmaster is going to be less effective than last time? Because now he's no longer matched into the carry Terry play. I think it's still a really good hero, just because when you run in, there's not a whole lot that Vichy could do against it. It did set up for some opportunities. You're still a really tanky five hero. I like it quite a bit. But mid one sent back. This is pretty common. Just that Lena matchup. 17 and 9 for the Lena, 11 and 2 for the Storm. You just get bullied. Even if mid lane is going the way of Ori, Nisha is doing a great job at bottom. 16 and 7 compared to the 11 and 1 in the Necrophos. Yeah, see, anytime you walk up to Remnant like that, you're just going to cop 4 or 5 hits. It's so efficient for the Lina to trade. And because your move speed's kind of bad on Storm as is, you sort of die as... DY building up the damage. Paparazzi, such a low cooldown nuke, they may be able to catch him, but Zai is able to get out. Now the dive in from the Absor, slowing down DY. He's going to be able to get the Fire Spirits in. DY is going to be finished off by the clap. Zai came in for that kill bounty. And now Fade and Puppy are both going to make a race here for the four-minute runes. Fire Blast, and it does end up being there. A haste rune for Puppy. Okay, Puppy now, just has a haste. That means he can run to lane, really mess up the yeah. Necrophos' life. I wonder if the Absor just goes mid right now, because this Storm can't really lane against this anymore. Yeah. It's way too annoying for him. But to jungle this early, that's got to hurt. Now Yang, he sees this haste rune from Puppy, realizes how much trouble he's in, and they save the Fire Blast just to make sure he can't TP away. And they've got to have a support down there just to help protect him, at least tanks him with the damage. Is Zai going to get gone on once again? They tried this last time, but he was able to survive. But this time around, they've got to lose speed to make sure he can't get the clap off. It's always hard to play against these Lunas with the constant Lucent Beams coming out. Yeah, and I did say Puppy earlier, but I meant Zai. We're just so used to seeing the Brewmaster played by Puppy. This is, I think, the first time in this tournament where they've been a little bit more traditional here as DY. They get beaten back a little bit. The Sleep, just to secure the Bounty Rune. Puppy trying to contest Fade, but it looks like it'll be a split 2-2. Two -two. Now mid one is going to be caught by the LSA. Level 6 for Ori. But this is around the time that you want to try to get this kill. I mean, it's so hard to jungle for this Storm Spirit this early on, right? But at the same time, it's looking like this lane is near impossible for him. The Magic Sick juggling by Paparazzi, trying to get some more mana so that he can loosen Beam. Does have it up just now, but not going to use it knowing that it wouldn't finish off size, so better to have that threat held in your back pocket. Yang, fighting Puppy, feeling strong. I really like the support Weaver against uh, Arc Warden. It's one of the few support heroes that just have the ability to gap close. The bugs are so useful against him, too. Mid one blowing through another healing salve as we see DYTPF. 
All in all, this is looking like a pretty successful laning phase, I would say, for Vici Gaming. Top two CS, Necrophos, who is third on the team, is just behind the Storm Spirit. Not bad at all. Yeah, and we've seen what this Yang Necro can do. Just straight up won two games for them. Do you think he's going to go for that carry build that we've seen from him before with the Radiants? Well, when it comes to Necro anyways, you, you just naturally get farm. You can't, you almost can't help it. It's hard for you to die so that you get to push in waves more aggressively than anybody else does. Is top lane Zai gonna get gone on? Barazzi thought about going for the Eclipse, but not gonna pop it here underneath the creep wave. Zai is a little bit isolated it. now, but if he jukes his way as he goes for the Eclipse or just gets the outside distance. of range, Zai's gonna be okay. Paparazzi misjudges that one, and Zai not only does he manage to force that out, but also manage to get a pull on the creep wave. Yeah, Paparazzi should have realized the animation still takes that half second tick. It's mid lane. That'll be a kill. Easily blown up mid one. Not much he could do there. He might have still gone to just solo even without the Weaver. That ulti was more than enough damage, but. EY. EY. He thought he was going to be fine in this man fight, but turns out, especially with Yapsor diving in. A 1v2 is going to be rough for him. And yeah, now it's 3 to 4. CS is still very favorable to Vici. I guess one of the big downsides I'd see for Secret here is that they have been so good at when they lose their laning phase, rotating their cores around and getting kills, but rotating a Storm Spirit in an Arc Ward this early is not going to feel good. No, you need minimum treads for this hero. Yeah. The way that this hero moves is you don't have the damage output without the treads, just because you're so reliant on your attack speed to get multiple overload hits off. It's not really your mana that limits you in the early game when you want to rotate. And on the flip side, though, you do have Ori, who I think, aside from mid one, has been by far the most aggressive made his mid lane. Oh, nice Close job. Mid Icarus dive, waking him up and then trading it off to dodge the LSA. What a beautiful play by Secret. And now they're actually going to jump the in regen. and grab the regen room. Oh, mid one. That was beautiful. You sneaky little thief, you. That was so well done. And the team play from Secret has been honestly just absurd at times. The way they chain stuff together. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Gonna take the Laguna Blade. Doesn't have the Acres dive up. Ori needs to be able to finish him off with a couple of hits and a Dragon Slay. That'll be enough. Instantly gonna TP out. Good call by him. Doesn't really know what's waiting in the wings. You don't want to throw away your advantage at this point. Yeah. The most farm hero on the map has to be careful about this. Especially with that regen from the storm that he grabbed earlier. Yeah, in fact, all three highest net worths in this game are already belonging to Vici. Similar to how last game started. Already a hood completed by Yang. And so far, so good for Vici. They were trying to put more of an emphasis, I think, after game one on making sure that the laning phase goes better so they're not trapped into those positions where they have to have ideal team fights. Spark Wraith will go on to DY here. Puppy really wants this kill, and they're going to be able to find it too. DY had no opportunity to turn around and brain sap there. Good use of the Arc Warden Spark Wraith by mid one, setting up that kill. 3,000 gold lead already for Vici Gaming. <laughs> Look at that, three Spark Race over the Bounty Runes. Good luck with that one, Vici Gaming. Four of them now. And that's how you protect it. <laughs> I guess so. Zai, Paparazzi does have the Eclipse, but he needs the vision. Oh, he's pinging. Really, just a loosened beam. DY just needs to be able to spot him. Look at the Courier, it's gonna fly over the trees to reveal Zai to get the sleep and get the kill to Paparazzi. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Reaper Scythe, not enough to be able to kill Puppy. Not yet anyway, but Yang may still be able to run him down with the help of the Swarm as well. That final pulse will do the job. Yang, with that regen, is gonna challenge Min one as well. There's no TPs coming in from Seeker whatsoever. Min one is gonna be left alone here. Yang's gonna try and fight him. Nisha just needs to be able to finish off Yang, but the Ghost Shroud's gonna go down. A Little bit extra Shroud damage, that's gonna be enough. Now, Zai, with the help of Yapsor, will be able to get revenge against Yang eventually here, as that regen's just not enough for him to be able to survive. But a one for two exchange in forcing rotations, it's a big win for Vici Gaming. And they're gonna get the two bounty runes on their side of the map. Very nicely done by them overall. So Lina almost has that Yule Scepter completed. And once you have Yules on Lina, it becomes so hard for the Storm to play anywhere. Your animation will always catch him. Once you get the Yules off, the stun combo is very easy to land. And they don't really have a saving hero on yeah. the side of Team Secret. And the pace of the Selena, I mean, this is what uh, Vici did to counter some of the greedy heroes that VP would pick in the laning phase, but they're gonna try to make the jump. But with the...
rest of the backup coming in, especially Paparazzi making his this? way all the way down. Yeah, what is this rotation from Paparazzi? I'm not sure. I'd imagine they were looking to smoke. Yeah. Or he was in the area ancienting and he saw something happen. Maybe he just read. Yeah, it's Mask of Madness time, so he's going to be spending a lot of time neutraling and giving the Bane that free solo experience in the top lane, allowing him to get back to his level 6. Luna is so far ahead right now. Top average net worth, man. You, uh, I think you pointed out in the panel, and I think several of the talent have here, Ori just looks like uh, a different beast this season. I mean, last year, I, I feel like he was kind of mediocre as a mid laner. He kind of did his job, was a space creator, but... Do they have a smoke? Is a Storm and the Phoenix are going to go for the smoke of their own. As this is the rotation, and this isn't an unexpected place. Normally, it's to their own off lane, but this time, they're going to connect to bottom. Supernova has already gone down. Paparazzi just needs to be slowed down enough, and that's where mid one comes in. Does manage to get him. Now it's going to be Yang caught by the Brewmaster, who throws out that stun. Icarus dive over the top as well. Yang's going to be able to heal up to full. The Bane's going to come in, try and maybe go for a sleep play, but he's instantly tornadoed. So now he may die as well. Bane is going to try and cut across to be able to help out his fellow supporting D.Y. Goes straight for the back line. Spots out Yapsor. Does manage to get the swarm on him, but D.Y. is still going to be caught by Puppy. Managed to get the fire blast in. Mid one's protecting Yapsor. Well, they still go for D.Y. Now the LSA set up. Oh, no. Secret. They just got too greedy. Now they're going to lose two, and Yapsor is barely going to make his way up with the TP scroll. It was a great fight for Secret until it just lasted too long. And Mid One's out of mana here. He oh, doesn't have no. a TP. Mid One, he's going to be caught as well. He doesn't have a way out. Doesn't matter if Ori misses a Dragon Slave. He still can get the kill. Nice counterplay. They needed something like that on the side of Secret. And it was a nice move, too. There's no way that Vici expected the move to come towards the bottom. Normally, when Mid One makes those plays, it's independent of anything. And he goes top. And on top of that, normally he leaves that mid lane for Yapsor. And so all the tells that, uh, and the patterns that you normally read out of Secret are gone. Five minutes faster than the average. He had pretty much a free mid lane. Yeah. He has double the net worth almost of mid one. Take a look back at that last team fight. It started so good. Paparazzi and Yang were caught from the start. Yeah, that was so, that was really well done. And Puppy with the Brewmaster Micro, he's gotta be so good at it by this time. Yeah. He's so used to it. I mean, look how quickly he uh, he catches DY. He knows there are gonna be heroes TPing in to try and set up this fight. And it was just this decision. Yeah, it's the greed to stick around for DY that really gets them caught. Now it's gonna be a fight inside this tier two of the Radiant Jungle. DY, he's gonna be already low, but mid one's gonna go straight for Ori, trying to deal with him, gets caught by Lucent Beam. Ori just running away from the Spark Wraith, cannot afford to get slowed down here. They're gonna rotate so many heroes down here. In fact, that's the entire team, just to get them out of their jungle. And Paparazzi, he was farming top, or Necrophos went mid almost immediately, caught some farm there. So it continues to be efficient plays for Vici Gaming, even if they lose their oh, they see the DY support. Viewers going deep for this. Might go all the way around to try to catch it on the way back in. Similar to what Puppy tried to do, but he's going to be a little bit too late. Secret again. Just like last game, we're going to have to play tower defense as much as possible. Rely on the team fight of the Phoenix Brewmaster. Good setup here on Puppy. Just waiting around on the high ground. Vici Gaming gonna be able to take that stack away as well. And one should know about this. The Weaver did pass through him. It's gonna force him down. He is gonna have the Kaya pretty soon, and you don't really need a lot of items on Storm to fight this game. It's just the timing of the Yules makes it hard. So yeah. even if you have the Kaya and if you get the Orchid right after, you're still almost always gonna be able to get the Yules off and just combo straight up. Yeah. And look Ori. at Ori. This is the second time in a row he's protected his uh, farm lead by going for the BKB early on. We saw it in the Bloodseeker game. Yeah. How weird when we've been talking about for most of this tournament that teams have been playing greedy and such and all these games are going late. Yeah. The idea of protecting your farm with BKB seems inherently like the opposite of what we're, we're seeing here for this tournament. Most of the time we're seeing later BKBs because everyone's being greedy, because these games are going late, but Vichy Gaming they feel like picking up the pace against Secret. Well, the reason why the Storm is always going to be good against Alina is that uh, Lina, even if you have that Yule Scepter and a Shadow Blade, you've got something like a thousand health. 
And if the storm jumps on you with dust, if you go Shadow Blade, you just die. Yeah. And you'll feed away all that prodigious net worth that you built up. Whereas if you go for this early BKB, even if you go for the jump, while you see him flying through midair, you just pop your BKB, you him up in the air. When he drops down, you kill him. There's very little that Storm can do to react to that. And in turn, it'll also be a good way to deal with this Phoenix Egg team fight that is supposed to allow Secret back into this game as well. And Lena's already a good answer to the Supernova. Yeah. Secret tried switching things up this game by going for the Ogre. It says that the Brew is as the support. So it could just bully, try to win this lane for this Arc Warden, but even so, just because of how the mid lane went and the top lane, it's made it way too difficult for them to contest anything. And unfortunately, Arc Warden, like, that's the hero that the lane went best for when it comes to Secret, but it's not a hero that has that kind of immediate impact. Yeah. His impact comes more in the form of split pushing with this Tempest double, or he's going to be caught. They try to jump over, but a BKB activated secret. Did not expect that one, that's for sure. They're going to be able to take out Psy first. And now look for more. DY was hoping to be able to catch mid one on his way out. Not able to do so, though. If you just take a look, they jump him, he BKBs. If he doesn't have BKB there, even if he Yules, they'll all in commit for that on the side of secret. And suddenly yeah. your 9,000 net worth Lina is pulverized. Because they don't really have save aside from uh, the Bane Sleep. They have multiple ways to just cut through that too. So you just have to buy time for mid one who... Oh, I mean, so much of his net worth is just tied up into that Midas. What do, what do you think about What is this build? What, going for the Maelstrom? I mean, Necronomicon, then Maelstrom. Is that what he had queued up? Yeah. Not oh. going for the maxed out Necroba? Maybe he just wants to continue to force... Uh, I mean, I guess Necro Book 1 is value when it comes to farming. Yeah. It's not going to be too terrible for team fights. It's just normally when we see this Necro Book, it goes to the maxed out build. You have all this pushing power. But here, it's very unlikely that Secret ever going to get that kind of ground for the next five or 10 minutes as uh, Vichy Gaming with an 8,000 gold lead this game. If Secret's going to win it, it's definitely got to push late. That's pretty interesting, though. So he just kind of makes the read. He's like, okay, this game is. I mean, it ups his farming speed too. Yeah. And they do have, they already have good ways to deal with uh, the Necro 3 if he gets it. The Luna and the Lina are so far. Yeah. That is definitely true. Bottom lane, Zai. Setting up around Yang, but. Uh, what Vichy are doing are similar to what Secret did to VP, where they just pick these lanes that are hard to kill. Yeah. And they protected their one. Hero that's easy to kill in the Lina by just getting a BKB straight up. Smoke's gonna break. Puppy in great position. He's gonna be able to stop Ori, but he still gets caught with the Yule Scepter. Now the Yule's used. Mid one's gonna try and go for the kill onto Ori, but he pops his BKB. Goes straight for Puppy. Doesn't activate the shrine though. Puppy confident that he'll be able to stay alive with that. And now the LSA placed onto the Brewmaster. Reaper Sight make sure he does not get the opportunity for a split. Babe keeps on looking for more, but Vichy Gaming don't have the greatest catch. And if he's not careful, he may catch a death here. Just gets turned around on by a multicast fire blast. You see that mid one? He thinks about it. I'm not making that maneuver back in, but that's a necro. I mean, that was pretty unnecessary there from Vichy Gaming. They got their big kill. They, they killed the core brewmaster. That's just the case of the, the Weaver thinking that the rest of his team could follow him up, but there's no BKB on the Lina. Yeah. As soon as he's expended that right, he is not itching for a fight anymore. No, he was also initiated on, so he had something like 300 HP, he had to back up. Paparazzi can't really close that distance either. And Secret, as a result of something like that, will be able to secure good amount of damage on that mid tower, but also the batting roots at top. BKB now for Paparazzi. This is Beachy Gaming committing heavily to this mid-game window, right? Just look at the amount of farm that, uh, or lack thereof, that Zai has right now. They committed so much into trying to do this three or four position, but Vichy did such a good job of securing their top lane that both of them just end up under farmed, whereas normally we see both of them get quite a bit. And it's because I think a lot of it is this, this Lina pick. The, the Phoenix can't just stand in the lane like he normally does against a lot of the other heroes that people have been picking against them. Like, okay. if you're an Invoker, are you ever really worried? But if you catch a stun, you just sort of die. Right. 
and it forces uh, mid one to always be there in the mid lane. If you notice, this is the game that he was uh, by far the least active. And when he made that move towards bottom, even that kind of turned around on them when they got over aggressive. Beachy Gaming. Pushing down here to the bottom lane, looking to finish off that tier two that they already delivered so much damage to earlier in the game. And they're just gonna go for the five men, and I think this is the correct decision. Leading off with the fire blast. Okay. Damn, oh, what an interception from D1. A beautiful one that stops the Brewmaster from getting the split off. What a ward position from Beachy Gaming and the Fiend's Grip preemptively laid out by DY. And we have the Lena here. Maybe they're thinking of just continuing to go for the high ground for a bit. It's still 50 seconds on the brew, but instead they turned their attention towards that mid lane. And that was mid animation. They caught him. So once again, Zai's game just continues to get so bad. Just quickly backdoor that tier one town, or maybe not so quick. Glyph goes down, but I highly doubt Secret really want to take a fight without their brewmaster. Well, the force staff. Oh, but he still ended it with the force staff. He's going to be able to get DY into position to hit that nightmare, but he's going to be caught by mid one. They're going to blow up that support on both sides. Mid one just needs to get out now. It's not the worst trade in the world. No. The Bane is worth quite a bit more. Storm, who needs the comeback, gets the gold. Yeah, it this, is this storm stop. is different than Invoker. Like when you when you're Invoker with the Spirit Vessel, you just really need an Axe after at some point. But with Storm, you farm and then you just continue to farm. And that's why the pace of this game it feels a little bit different than most of the most of the secret games that we're used to. Right. Because Nisha's is playing this Arc Warden, he just has to continue to farm as well. There's no real recovery method from the secret side aside from just farming. Normally, that wouldn't be the case if Zai got a little bit more out of that top lane, but every single team fight, he's just straight up died. Mid, they're, gonna split. they're just gonna run a Yang. Sun Ray, he's already healed up a ton, and they immediately throw Paparazzi into the air so they can continue no the damage it. on a Yang. Mid one with the long jump in, he's able to finish him off. Now, Paparazzi, surrounded by so many enemies, he's forced to pop his BKB instantly, but Nisha cannot afford to get caught. That's why he wakes himself up with the Tempest double. The Tempest Double resumes its damage onto that mid tier they one. They know about tower. the Shadow Blade. They're BG trying to bait it. They spot out that Shadow Blade. They're going to get the mid tower and very good roll by mid one over the top, binding the Necro. That's going to lead to that mid tower that they really need. And ping the Roshan as if they're trying to take it, but no way. Great read by Zai as well, understanding that if he pops the Primal Split right there, he can just run down the Necro with his yeah. Brulings. And more importantly, you dissuade the team fight. Yeah. You saw that paparazzi came in, he just gets tornadoed up in the air. If you don't pop it there, you're being a little bit too greedy. And it's not like Zai was finding better opportunities. His game was already being hampered. You might as well make life easier for yourself. So now with this mid tower taken, you have options. You can farm out that triangle, you can farm out that top side of the map. You can send the arc warning clones to push out bottom. That's why this mid tower is so important for the side of secret. It just gives you more opportunities But the axe already completed wow. by the Weaver. Fade. What's the timing on that one? Definitely way faster than the average. Full nine minutes ahead. 25 minute bounty runes are coming up. Vici Gaming trying to position themselves near the top half part of the map. That's where Roshan is also sitting around. You can see both teams are trying to maintain vision control around this Roshan pit. And I like the commitment to the sentries, especially near this bounty room puppy. He's afraid that the Lena might just shadow plane in. The bounty runes get split, but Zai can't afford to get caught here by Ori. He's going to shadow plane in. If he gets close enough, he gets the Yules. Maybe he's going to guess who the LSA. Oh! Just to the left. Whew. Ori, the right idea was super close to be able to get that one. Mid one jumps away from DY, who is willing to just point blank Fiend's grip as soon as he sees that Storm Spirit. That's a full butterfly completed by Paparazzi. 
He had the fastest BKB of this event. Now the fastest butterfly. They're going to try and go on if the sleep is going to go down to be able to pause a moment. Now with the Fiend's Grip, they're going to be able to turn with the Eclipse. The fight is already over. It's just a question of how many heroes VG Gaming can actually catch. And the real Arc Warden is actually here. Fate's going to try and chase him down. Paparazzi, he's going to try and get close enough for a Lucent Beam, but it's going to be slowed down by that Flux for a moment, so they'll deal with the Tempest double instead. And that was an aggressive jump for a hero that you're most likely not killing. He's got BKB, they've got the sleep reset. Oh, again. They got happens. Weaver Axe too. They're just gonna walk into the Roshan pit very early. But with the Butterfly Luna, the Lina attacks for quite a bit too. What are your options here if you're secret? Giving this up for free does not feel good. Century after century being laid down. They're gonna protect their ward. That means it's oh, what an interception with the Yule Scepter. That's gonna be a free Reaper side kill. They knew that they were gonna try something. They were hanging around the area as they're gonna get more out of this puppy. Hanging around, seeing what Yapsor could do. It's instead gonna get caught as well. Two down from Team Secrets. Look at this timing Three. too. Oh, can catch we him. Can catch mid one here. He's got the combination. He just gets the Laguna Blade mana, but mid one is able to zip away as the timing was wrong. He's gonna go for the cut on the creep wave. Try and take all the momentum away from Vici Gaming in this mid lane push. You gotta do the same thing that you did last game, which is try to get as much pressure as you can on the side lanes yeah. and force Vici in a position where they have to continuously come back and buy yourself time. Obviously, Secret weren't able to win the game last game because I just don't think they had the heroes for it. But this time around, they've got the Arc Warden. They've got the Storm. They have better ways to scale. Once you turn into, like, kind of the carry Arc Warden, you are pretty good versus this Luna, right? It's just a long distance. You just got to get every item in the book. Yeah. This is the way that you make Arc Warden as annoying as possible. Well, it helps that he got that tier two tower at top lane, aided by Zai and his heavy push. The one thing that Nisha doesn't want to do is get into a, an unnecessary fight. Yeah. Because the hero is still really susceptible to death. No BKB on him. I think the reason why he decided to do that, though, is because there's no long range jump. There's no axe on the team. There's no way to really catch him in the back lines. And that's the benefit that they have is if you look at Vici's lineup, they've more or less got three cores uh, that are just battlers. They don't have the best ways to initiate. So when it comes to the high ground, Secret are gonna hold this game unless they get caught out for no reason for quite some time. So Vici Gaming not gonna be able to find the easiest way into that high ground with their creep waves constantly being cut. Paparazzi, they're gonna run into him, tried to go for the Fire Blast, ran out of vision. Paparazzi now <laughs> pushing forward. He gets the Hurricane Pike on the Puppy, not scared at all since he's got another two and a half minutes for this Aegis. So they'll be able to take the Outer Towers, yes, but the real problem is going high ground. Yeah, and they might just consider it. They've got Aegis. This Luna's still really strong. Or maybe it's not going to be a problem at all for Vici Gaming. They're just going to go right up there. Too. Paparazzi with the Lotus Orb on him. That's going to be hard to push into. Now Midwan managed to get the pullback. Instantly stopped. There's that time lapse from the Weaver. Stopping any sort of combinations between that time lapse as well as the Nightmare. It is tough to try and grab and kill this carry on the high ground. With the Weaver Ags and the Aegis, you're working with a lot of lives here on the Luna. You still have plenty of time to make this work as mid one's gonna just try to get the creep wave. And he He's does. so far. Might even just try to go for the courier here. Good read by mid one there. Good time to zip away because Ori was on the hunt. And now they actually go for a smoke up because not only is creep wave gone, but the bottom lane's pushing in. They They're know splitting up. gonna split up. This would be a really good opportunity for them to find somebody. DY would be by far the worst target for them to get, but they might just get Yang here. Midwan's gonna be able to get that initiation pullback in. Good Lotus Orb, but now the rest of the team is here. They're gonna be able to get the flex. The feed script goes down. Instantly stop with the fire blast. Zai's gonna pop his primal split just to make sure that the there's the no coming, way though. that Yang can escape. Now the rest of each gaming, they are gonna try and get here to be able to save Yang's life. Fade is gonna be able to get that time lapse. But caught by the fire blast immediately as he comes out. Almost a full heal. Tries to go for the Reaper Scythe. That's gonna be a supernova. Reaper Scythe does go down. Managed to finish off a hard court. And he's dead for two minutes as long as the supernova dies. And he does. Paparazzi barely gets it now. Secret with that supernova failing to That's go up DD in time. Luna. Have to leave this double damage Luna. Now CC opportunity. He's gonna push down this lane in mid one. He's gotta stop this push. 
They don't have an Arc Warden. It's 100 seconds down for him. And they're just going to go for it. The DD is still alive for quite some time. The backdoor protection is there. It's going to wear out soon. Paparazzi like two seconds. starts laying that heavy damage into the Tier 3. The Glyph is going to go down. But what do you do? You even when their Phoenix comes up, they won't have Supernova. There's no buyback on the Arc Warden. He's dead for quite some time, still 70 seconds. And this is what I... When you get the six slot Arc Warden, yeah, you feel a lot better. But when you have this three item Arc Warden, you just die. Yeah. You can't really approach fights. Now the jump in, Paparazzi's gonna be pulled back. Ori looks for the Yule Scepter as well as the time lapse onto Paparazzi. Now the man's in the LSA. That's costly. And there goes that Storm Spirit. Now he's gonna be back up in three seconds' time. So Vichy Gaming cannot overextend here. Seam Secret can still win this fight as they're going to be able to get the long jump in from mid one team with a lot of damage. Paparazzi, Lotus Orb bouncing back on a puppy. That'll spell his doom. But he buys back as well. Second lane of Rax, Vichy Gaming. 35 seconds, that's such a long time for this Arc Warden. we got Reaper Sight. Another jump back. in, the backdoor protection is just not going to come back up though. Not in time with all these bouncing glades doing so much damage to these racks. And now the push forward on his eyes. Eyes gonna be caught as well. Had no primal split. It was on cooldown for three seconds. He's gonna be forced into the buyback, but now with a Sunray. Paparazzi drops low, pops BKB, just trying to nail damage to the Phoenix. He's almost gonna be able to get him. The App Store tried to get away, but still copping the damage out from Git Fade. Min one dies. Arc Warden coming back up in two seconds time. That primal split now being popped is gonna try and catch several heroes of VG Gaming. The Storm Spirit needs 10 seconds. That's why they're just going to try and stall with these tornadoes and these stones. DY is going to catch the next stun while the Storm Panda tries to push forward. Doesn't find anybody else, so it's just going to be DY for two lanes of racks. A five position of VG Gaming is simply no good light here for Team Secret going into this game three. A 22,000 net worth lead for VG Gaming. Two lanes of racks by 33 minutes. They use all their buybacks up. And now a Scythe as well, mid one. There's no Bloodstone Trap, I mean, he's got six. Won't and have no any Lincoln, sort of impact. So if Ori finds him. He's looking for it. He sees the angle right and now. He gets the stun. Long range. He's gonna go for the Laguna Blade, interrupted by the Blast, but they have the Reaper Scythe. That's gonna be enough to kill mid one. He's now dead for 80 seconds. Supernova will be able to go off successfully though, and it catches Yang, slowing him down. They also get the Spark Ray damage on him. Tier two falls, Team Secret will retreat, VG Gaming. Just hope to be able to catch somebody He's here. He's gonna run. Oh, Team Secret, are they gonna try for it? I mean, you have to take some risks at this point. They're gonna stay on the high ground. Ori being chased by that, pops the BKB instantly. Sees all these heroes, managed to get an LSA, but so much physical damage. There goes the time blast. They managed to save him. Now the jump in, the clap's not gonna be good enough. The Sunray over the top is good. And it does manage to finish off one hero, but doesn't save Secret's fight. Yapsor will be caught by the swarm as well, but completes the TP out. VG Gaming, they lose Ori. Yes, but it wasn't the team fight that Secret needed to be able to turn this game around in the slightest. Yeah, I like that play by Ori a lot. He just walks up with the PKB. He trusts that his Weaver is going to buy himself enough time, even with half HP. He's like, I'll probably die, but this fight is going to be so good for the rest of his team. Now, Vici Gaming. Finishing off that range racks. One lane of racks remaining between them and Megas with five seconds left on the Storm Spirit. It's going to have to be some weird three versus four. The tier three is already gone. They are going to be protected by the bubble as best as possible. Paparazzi needs to get in there, but mid one's going to go for the back line. Tries to go for DY, gets up on that one. Now leg damage on a Paparazzi. They need to be able to deal with these physical damage dealers, but Nisha, he's going to lose his Tempest double. And now the real one's going to be caught by the Fiend Script. DY is going to die, though, so Nisha's going to be able to turn around, but can't protect the racks. And that's what VG Gaming came here for. They're going to be able to get the Megas, try and finish up Nisha as well. Paparazzi's not quite able to do that much, but managed to pick up his MKB in the process. BKB now on cooldown, but Secret are struggling to be able Lay damage onto him with the Lotus Arm bouncing back so much damage onto Puffy. Midwan comes in again. Now he's got the full heal out. He's going to be able to do a dot, but there goes that time lapse. Now Paparazzi turns around, managed to finish off the Arc Warden. Supernova's going to go down. He's getting stunned up too much. That will be the death of Paparazzi, yes. But Mega Creep by 35 minutes. Vici Gaming, even if they all get caught here, it won't make much of a difference as Yang. 
He'll fight for his life here. Again, the Lotus Orb returning so much damage back. The Yapsor with the Reaper Sight. It's almost enough, but Yapsor lives a little bit longer, but can't get away. No Acres dive up. Now, Secret are going to try and push forward with their buybacks, but oh, VG Gamer just going to run him over. They've already taken out the Storm Spirit as well as the Argoard. The two carries the Secret are dead, and so are Secret's chances for this game three. Fantastic draft by Vici. They heavily prioritize the laning phase. And once again, they win all three lanes. This time around, it's so much easier with the type of heroes that they have. And they see an Arc Warden and a Storm on the other side. The guys on the panel said that would be a little bit too greedy. The first time around, they had an Invoker, Quas Wex. You can hold high ground. It's dangerous to try to go high ground against that. Yeah. But this time around, I mean, the initiation from them just wasn't quite there. And I really like the item choices by pretty much everyone on the side of Vici. The Lotus Orb, instead of going for that Radiance, that made it really difficult for them to ever jump. The early Aghanim Scepter pickup by that Weaver is starting to look broken in back-to-back -back games. Every single time you think, Secret, maybe they stand a shot. Nope, time lapse. Blitz, is there a hero that you would like to see Secret ban out? Are you gonna stretch to maybe even the Weaver? I think the Lina was the bigger problem. Okay. The fact that she was able to dominate her mid lane so hard, get online really quick, get that BKB, she became this roaming beast that mid one just couldn't keep up with. At some point, he just had to continue to farm, but a Kaya Bloodstone Storm isn't very scary. Yeah. That doesn't really represent a kill threat for you. Well, you've heard Blitz's ideas for Team Secret. Now we're going to go to the panel. How is Secret going to get back into the series? They've got a game four and a game five ahead of them. Indeed, they do. If they want to win this tournament, that is, they need to go all five games, which we personally quite like to see, actually, here in the Barclay Card Arena. But nevertheless, uh, let's break down game number three with Kyle. Uh, we're back on the panel once more with Fogden Trend alongside. Um, too greedy. I know a number of you thought that was too greedy. Is that the whole story, though, it Kyle? It really isn't, I don't think. It's the second game in a row. They lose all three lanes, and mm. mid wasn't... That was hard this time. Mid was a disaster. Or he's playing like a man who wants a Mercedes, in all honesty. <laughs> and if he can do that again, he might just get one, because he just shut down mid one made all the right rotations. That BKB at the end there, I mean, right as he came into the range of the sentry, he recognizes Oceans, there's like seven guys here. Media BKB, the fade time lapses once again. Like, it feels like the fights for Vici are just on easy mode because they always have a save. And they always have the, they're always ahead, right? I mean, Ori got, he was, I looked him like level 14 and a half, 16 minutes with Yule's BKB already. Zai's like, I've got my Blink Dagger. Yeah. He blinks in and just gets instantly <laughs> Yule's and exploded because this team just turns around the BKB instantly. It's, it, they look incredibly prepared for this laning phase and just, we were talking about how they wanted to match Secret wanting to do these like battles early on. Secret now, when they're picking this Phoenix Brew opener, they're leaving their side lanes weak. They have to be able to find a different solution. The Ogre can only actually secure one and this time he wasn't able to do it at all versus then I propose. The support opener, but then also just like the cores, frankly, right? It's like Arc Warden. We talk about how, you know, it did look like the way Secret typically sets up for an Arc Warden draft. That's mm -hmm. kind of why I pointed out, but uh, maybe the supports just weren't enough to get that going. And maybe more so, it's just the overall speed that you're gained by having that Luna, right? It's like one of these cores is actually able to play very quickly in the game. You don't have to really wait for it to come online at all. Uh, and then Yang got his signature Necrophos at this point, honestly. Very solid on it to help carry that through. No, too many, too many good things from Vici in this game. Um, Cap posed the question to Blitz, would you ban the Weaver? And he said, no, I'd ban the Lena. Agree, disagree? Is the Weaver not part of why they're very good at the moment? It's just because they're, they're using it to such versatility, so you're, you're not sure if it's going to be this core until that, that real last pick. You're just like, oh, okay, yep. It's going to be support hero this time, and exactly, again, he was able to do so much of it. I felt like, for me at least, them able to secure the safe lane was massive. Like, this Bane Luna, able yeah. to just shut down Zai as well as Yapsor in the game, that was so crucial, because they could not slow Paparazzi down. This lane is just, was just way too strong. Yeah. I don't think you ban it, I think you pick Lina, like they did in the first game. Yeah. That third pick spot is super nice if you want to pick up a Lina early, since they can play it on so many heroes on Secret. Um, Phoenix is 0-3 so far in the Grand Finals, and I think that's something to discuss, because it's always getting open with, yeah. but it somewhat limits the pool of offlaners pretty significantly, I think, because you, you don't have any stunts anymore mm -hmm. on that hero. Okay, we're going to get more from all three in just a moment, but uh, first let's check back in with Purge at the weather desk. It was a great game by Vici Gaming there, but it really came down to a couple small moments in the laning stage that were super punished on by Vici. Now in the off lane, uh, the Luna as well as Bane dual lane is very strong, of course, um, and Secret's starting the lane off okay, going for some 
little trades, some harass are trying to push the lane, and they're semi-successful at this, but right after this moment, Bruce sneaks around, cuts some trees, and tries to pull the creep wave around so that he can get free creep wave uh, experience. But DY ends up blocking some of the creep wave, and two of those creeps end up staying under the tower. And while he's pulling the creep wave back to his tower, Bane's following him, which means that Luna's now getting solo experience under her tower. You know, last hitting these creeps, whatever. It doesn't matter that much. The fact that she hits level two here is huge, because when Luna gets two, she's got a damage aura for her and Bane, and she has a 0.8 second stun on a six second cooldown, which in the next little engagement ends up being huge, because Zai gets harassed by right clicks that benefit both heroes and those lucent beams and a small mistake that happens a little bit after this about here Zai's trying to retreat he ends up getting blocked by Yapsor uh, body blocked a little bit and as a result he ends up getting killed on the back line so the lane was going bad in the first place and he ends up dying and then on the mid lane where things were looking okay for Storm at first Lena picks up a DD rune at the two minute mark and mid one instantly upon seeing that ditches out of the lane a little bit backs up and waits to see if the creep wave will push up enough unfortunately he didn't block his creep wave there maybe a big mistake and as a result of the equilibrium staying on the high ground he can't even get close to approaching the lane because of the DD timing has to go jungle that ends up being super inefficient he comes back to the lane and he's already like a level and a half behind so they instantly lost the safe lane and the mid lane at the three minute mark here in this game mm. again brilliant analysis great breakdown a good example of how Vici have won the lanes in the last two games maybe quite so hard in that last game but it was kind of said in the mid they definitely were uh now mvp uh who are we going to pick for this one well i think ori yeah it's got the, the kind of, you know, universal vote here yeah. on the panel. And he got, I was like, oh my God, Trent, who has a hex right now? And yeah, yeah, Lena just picked it. I'm like, wait, it's like 20 something minutes in the game. What the? Yeah, he played, I mean, like honestly amazing. He was just putting so much pressure on and mid one, mid one just didn't even, couldn't even have a game. Yeah, and it's not often we can say that, Kyle, is it? Mid one's been fantastic all the way through this tournament. It's rarely had a rough laning phase, let alone a bad game. Yeah, and I also, you know, don't take it for granted. Ori also bought fantastic Lena items. He did. Each and every one has a, direct impact into the game. Four active items. He played incredibly actively around the map. And I feel like if you're Seeker, the only thing I can take from these last two games, like I don't know how much you really learned from Vici as much as it's just, hey, you know, let's not get crushed in our lanes and give ourselves a fighting chance. Because I still think they're playing at a very high level. Sure. It's just, you're already starting so far behind. And these are good Dota teams. They are very good Dota teams if we learned nothing else at all. Right, we're going to head to a break. It is just one game away now for Vici Gaming. They've been here before. They've been one game away from a title at ESL1. Can they finally close it out? That will be happening very shortly. We'll see you soon.